That's part of what the committee's focusing on, uh, what Donald Trump was doing in the private dining room. They're just watching the thing unfold, the violence unfold on television. And just a, a little while ago, I spoke with a member of the January 6th Select Committee, uh, Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, Democrat from Florida, and she talked about what the committee hopes to gain from these hearings. I certainly hope that they are changing minds, particularly since these hearings are presenting to the American people the advice that the president was receiving, not from Democrats or from outsiders, but rather from loyal Republicans, people who were committed to the mission of this administration, but for whom, um, when the president asked them to cheat in order to win, decided that they weren't willing to go that far with him. Um, you have heard from so many Republicans about what was asked of them, the pressure that was put on them, and how they withstood that, how they understood that their obligation to upholding the Constitution uh, ranked above the request from any individual American who was interested in uh, retaining power. And so I certainly hope that hearing in the voices of the Republicans, of people in the room, that we are changing some of the uh, American minds out there. Um, and really, what we've been trying to do from the start is to lay out the facts and evidence and let the American people decide for themselves whether this person is fit for um, the office that he served in and whether or not um, we as Americans want to jointly, um, jealously protect our uh, democracy and the idea that our vote counts at the ballot box. Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, Democrat of Florida, with a preview of what uh, she says the committee wants to achieve with these hearings. Our coverage begins with ABC News White House correspondent Mary Alice Park. So, Mary Alice, uh, we know that Donald Trump, from previous hearings, the evidence came out. Obviously, he planned the march to the Capitol. He wanted to join it. He was aware that many members of this mob, his supporters, were armed. That didn't bother him. So how is the committee integrating all of the previous evidence from the hearings into the culminating hearing tonight? Yeah, Terry, I think they want to try to explain why the president was there watching TV and not springing into action. I imagine there's going to be a lot of focus on one thing the president did do, which was send that tweet where he said Mike Pence did not have the courage to do what should have been done. We know that that tweet was sent minutes, several minutes actually, after rioters had already breached the Capitol building. And we also know that both the witnesses that are going to testify at tonight's hearing had such strong reactions to that tweet. We know that uh, Matthew Pottinger said that that was the moment, that tweet was the moment that he decided he was going to resign. He's the former deputy national security advisor there in the Trump White House. And Sarah Matthew said that she, uh, she's a former deputy press aide there in the White House, and she said that she thought the president was adding fuel to the fire with that tweet, that here they were watching on TV the violence uh, breaking out, and he still sent a tweet like that. So I think there's going to be a lot of focus on exactly the timeline, what information did he have before he sent that tweet and after it. it. It's kind of motive evidence, as it were. On the one hand, you might think, well, the president is on top of a chaotic, fast-breaking situation, the way all of us get on top of it, with live video from the scene. But they're portraying it, as you just say, connected to the whole story that they've been laying out the evidence for, which is that he wanted this to happen and was allowing it to happen. And uh, these two White House, former White House staffers that you mentioned both quit, uh, how significant are they in, in that story and in building that case? I mean, I think that they're significant for different reasons. Matthew Pottinger was a high-ranking official. Like I said, the former deputy national security advisor, he's not the kind of person that the former president can dismiss as a low-level aide. He was someone that played a significant role in the White House and someone with military experience. So I think he brings a lot to the table. And there's going to be questions uh, to him, I imagine, about the lack of, of um, direction for the National Guard. There was so much confusion, so much finger-pointing in the days after January 6th. Who directed or did not direct? 
expect the National Guard to respond and respond quickly to the violence? And was the president urged to pick up the phone and help clear the, clear the way and give the order and make sure the National Guard was responding? I think that he will be answering a lot of those questions. And then, you know, Sarah Matthews is really, I think, going to provide a more personal uh, sort of testimony. She has talked in the weeks after uh, January 6th and, and in this whole last year about how those events where people she knew were running and hiding for their lives really shook her to the core, how upset she was. And frankly, these are just two people who were there in the White House that day when so few were. Hmm. And, and Mary Alice, I want to tap into your political acumen here. The committee is um, trying to essentially build a common ground on what happened and the meaning of it. And the question that people have been asking from the beginning, is there any way that in this divided country, uh, evidence taken under oath from Trump's own staffers and his inner circle in some ways uh, would even do that? What's your assessment of the $64,000 question that gets asked, asked all the time, the political impact that these hearings are having? I think that it's slow moving. I don't think that there's one moment that has necessarily broken through, but it has had an accumulative effect. And we've seen that in some of the data, especially around independent voters who we know are watching these hearings. And, and that matters. And I think you're right. Part of what has been so powerful is that these haven't been Democrats up there testifying. These have been people who worked closely with the president, who stood by him, who worked in his White House, who have been testifying to the facts as they saw them, as they saw them unfold in the days and weeks after the election and that day. And I think it has been so important to have so many people close to the president say under oath that they did not see evidence of any election fraud, especially ahead of these midterm elections where we are seeing so many candidates continue to run on election denials to hear people in the White House say that they didn't have any evidence and that they told the president that. Uh, Mary Alice Parks, as always, thanks very much for that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.